Hello everybody, how are you guys? We're continuing this cool series we're doing on communities in Pittsburgh. I almost said Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh is a whole nother town. It's here in Pennsylvania. It's in. Uh, it's outside of Philadelphia. We're going to talk about Pittsburgh in a later video. But right now, we're doing a series of videos on communities in Pittsburgh. And this video is going to talk about Brentwood. Now, Brentwood, of course, like many of today's videos, is on the south side of town across the river. Now, I call it the city. I don't know how they do it in Pittsburgh. I'm uh, visiting. But I like to call the main part of the city, which is in between the rivers, I call that the city. And uh, the, the southern side across the river on the south, I call the south, uh, southern, southern, southern suburbs. <laughs> Southern Cross, wasn't that a song? Southern suburbs I've been traveling through the southern suburbs I'm collecting flowers and delicate herbs So today we're going to talk about Brentwood And a lot of people have been asking about Brentwood Because there are so many communities in the United States named Brentwood and what is unique about the Brentwood here? Well, Brentwood, like a lot of Pittsburgh, goes way, way back. It was incorporated in 1707, but had been a community for a long time before, you know, for many years, for, uh, let's say, 30 years, probably before that. Figure 1776, a few years before the uh, Revolution in 1776. So let's, let's just say uh, 30, 40, 50 years. Now, of course, that was even before a lot of the manufacturing started to happen in this area. And so Brentwood didn't have that manufacturing base or that manufacturing history, but it does have a longer history. And it is more of a natural uh, bent because the city, and hence the natural name, Brentwood, right? And Brentwood was the site of some uh, early games. Like it was... It was kind of like the, the stadium or the where you would go to play sports. So a lot of this, now early on, there wasn't a lot of contention between natives and uh, explorers, right? They all got along early on. So they would play games, play sports amongst each other. And, and their stadium, the main stadium that they had the most seating, had the most refreshments, had the best uh, selection of, of merch, t-shirts, sweatshirts, okay, stickers. Well, that was all in Brentwood. And it had that sort of earlier name for stadium. You might have heard it, Stadia. And they called it the Brentwood uh, Stadium. And you could, it was, for that time, it was pretty big. I mean, four or 5,000 people could sit in there. But remember, in those days, you know, <laughs> what, what, about 100 people were in Pittsburgh at any one time. We're talking in 1770, you know, 1800. You'd have probably 100 people at any one time. Some were coming, some were going. Some were canoeing, some were kayaking, some were uh, trapping beaver. But one of the games that was big in those days was called uh, Flip Flap Joe. Flip Flap Joe was uh, originated by a one-eyed be beaver trapper named uh, One-Eyed Joe. And Flip Flop Joe started when he'd flip flop a beaver over a few times trying to determine if it was a male or female. So he'd flip and flop it. They said, Joe, is that a male or female you trapped out there? And he said, let me just flip flop it a couple of times. Let me just flip flop it a couple of times and I'll tell you. And that little activity, that little action, the flip flopping, uh, turned into a whole sport out there in the frontier. Now remember, you're talking about, you know, you see these clearings, you see these parks, you see these greenery. They didn't have that, it was all trees. So flip-flopping beavers was as natural as uh, using a Q-tip to get the wax out of your ears. Or 
your fingernail, whatever you, you know, your story is. So uh, the way Flip Flop and Joe work, work, they take a dead beaver and you got two teams and they had a 60 second timer on the clock. And they say, go! And they, both teams start flip flopping beavers, flip flopping, flip flop, flip flop, flipping. And you call it out, you go, male, female. Right, you call them out, and then the team, then they, they toss that one beaver onto the pile, they grab another one, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop, male, female, right? So in 60 seconds, you start flip flopping. <laughs> you start flip flopping beavers, folks. And you try to determine if they're male, female. I mean, it sounds like the silliest thing you ever heard, but guys, I mean, you can remember. There was one fort, one cabin. You, I mean, a bottle of whiskey was like 500 pieces of silver and 40 pieces of gold. I mean, entertainment was not that easy to come by. So that was a big one, and that would fill the stadium. They would fill the stadium. 5,000 people watching people flip-flopping beavers and called out which is a boy or a girl. That was the whole sport. Now you had professional teams, you had visiting teams, you had traveling teams, you had a college team. You had uh, University of Pittsburgh had a team. Uh, guys, University of Pittsburgh had their own beaver flip-flopping team. And not only that, but they had a pretty deep bench because they drafted well. They went out in the woods and they found one-eyed Joes, uh, similar, uh, that could flip-flop a beaver like a pancake. I mean... Unbelievable story. Well, guys, that all took place in Brentwood, and it's such a deep history. Remember, you know, a lot of people think of Pittsburgh as the manufacturing mavens, and that's true. Uh, but the manufacturing didn't really kick in until like 1780. Well, Brentwood was around before then, guys, because it was woodsmen. It was frontiersmen. It was like the one-eyed Joes, okay, that had a little hitch in their step from walking up and down hills and hollers all day. Uh, so Brentwood goes deep, guys. It goes deep. And if you get a chance, you want to go over there. The stadium is still there. You can sit in the stadium and picture people flip-flopping beavers. And remember the original days of Pittsburgh and uh, be amazed at how far it has come today. Guys, this has been a Joe Ditzel parody. Come back. We have so many more communities in this area. And people are just going crazy for these videos. And uh, we're getting down in the, in the nooks and the crannies, the streets and the avenues, to bring you all the info. Come on back.